الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد جماعة let's, uh, let's make this a مجلس of علم هلم إلى رحاب الجنة come close brothers يعني if you're on the sides إن شاء الله come close this is uh, like the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said this is a, a garden, a garden in Jannah. When we sit down and we're studying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meanings behind his ibadah and his worship and his love, wallahi, there's no better place to be. Let's be close. Because as close as we are today, inshallah, we'll be that close in Jannah together. Bi'idhnillah. But let's stick, inshallah, together. So if we're sitting outside on the outskirts, Inshallah, come close so that the angels can surround us. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, حَفَّتْهُمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels surround them. So if we're scattered, how, how are we going to make We're going to make it hard for the angels. Right? Let's, let's make it easy. Let them love us, inshallah, so that they remember us next week. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I think it's been six durus, right? We did, we did six so far. This might be the seventh. How, how has this affected us so far? That's my question. Have we made change or no? Did Iman grow in our heart? Did the love, was the love nourished inside of us yet? Did our salah change? Did our striving for knowledge change? Did our attraction to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that brings us pleasure, did any of that change? None of it. This is what we should be asking ourselves. Everyone knows what's inside of them. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَذِيرًا You are more knowledgeable about yourself than anyone. You know. This question no one can answer but, but you, about yourself. Have you been benefiting? Salli ala Rasul. Let's say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. 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 Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. So last week we spoke about salah. How was our salah today, by the way? How was our salah today? Ya Allah. Fatat. Wallahi, if we paid our life, the salah that we just prayed will not come back. Wallahi, if we give everything in the world, the salah we just prayed will never, can never be redone by us. It's in an envelope sealed not to be seen until the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah, God. And I can guarantee you one thing, brothers and sisters, one thing. One thing, and I'm your brother. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say it bluntly and straight up. 100 years from now, the salah that you prayed will be more important to you than anything in this world. And every thought that distracted you in salah will be meaningless to you and pointless to you. Everything that distracted you, that distracted you in salah, every single thing and thought that went through your mind about this dunya will mean nothing that has to do with this dunya. The only thing that would matter is the the tadabbur, tafakkur, what you thought of the Quran, what you thought of Allah what you thought about Iman, what you thought about your status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to perfect your salah, that's the only thing that would matter to me. So why are we losing? How many salahs and opportunities need to be lost before we wake up? This masjid is going to be here. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Okay? The person praying Isha 100 years from now is going to come in. Would we be here? Probably not. 
what would this rug testify? Would it say, he made khushu'a, he shed a tear on me from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from khushu'a to Allah? Or would it say this person was oblivious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wallahi, let's ask ourselves. If we ask, you know, as believers, we need to talk to ourselves sometimes. Not like insanely, you know, not walk around talking to yourself, but you need to talk to yourself. Ya nafsu malaki takrahin al jannah, you know, like some of the Sahaba, like Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Yani he was telling his son, Ya nafsu, why do you hate Jannah? Every time he swayed away, every time Allah, he's like, Ya nafs, he would talk to himself, oh self, what do you hate, Jannah? <laughs> Get back and check. Come back. What are you what's wrong with you? And then he would wake himself up. So do we wake ourselves up often or no? That's what we need to ask. Today, inshallah, we're going to continue talking about salah and maybe even going into zakah. And we said that we're not going to talk about fiqh and fiqh matters, right? We're talking about what's behind this salah. What's the foundation of it, the true ruh? What did we say the ruh of salah is? What's the soul of salah? Khushu'a. Ya jama'a, al khushu'a. Wal-ikhlas, wal-niyyah, sakina You know, these are like, you know, sincerity, right? Having having khushu'a, being focused in your prayer, knowing what you're saying, understanding who you're standing in front of. That's what we're going to talk about today, inshallah. So here, we mentioned last week about hudur al-qalb, right? We said that, your heart has to be there. And you have to try and understand the meanings of the words that we're saying in salah, right? These are important. They're not, they're not any joke. But you know, today we're going to go even deeper. We're going to grab this heart, inshallah. We're going to try to wash it with the shower of ilm and iman, inshallah ta'ala. Say inshallah. Inshallah. We want to wash it. Let's purify this heart. Now, the Imam Rahimahullah, he says, وَإِن كَانَ مِنَ الْمَوَادِ الْبَاطِنَةِ فَطَرِيقُ عِلَاجِهِ أَنْ يَرُدَّ النَّفْسَ قَهْرًا إِلَى مَا يَقْرَأْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ وَيُشْغِلُهَا بِهِ عَنْ غَيْرِهِ وَيَسْتَعِدُّ لِذَلِكَ قَبْلَ الدُّخُولِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ Now, guys, he's saying that of, if a person is distracted in salah because we ended talking about these distractions, right? If a person is distracted in salah and distraction is bothering them and it's driving them crazy and they're thinking so much of this world, they can't get it out. Then he's giving us a way to, to make us pray the right way. He say the person has to force their nafs to stay focused. That's number one. You know how outside... You're, you're thinking of multiple things. You're at, a, at your job and your boss is like, MashaAllah, or your employees are saying, MashaAllah, you're the owner of the business and you're doing so many things and thinking of so many things at the same time. And you're like, yes, Alhamdulillah, I'm multitasking. You see, when you're in Salah, this multitasking, you check it out with the shoes. You put it on the rack. There's no multitasking in Salah. There's only one task. We can't do multitasks within salah. So what he's saying, أَنْ يَرُدَّ النَّفْسَ قَهْرًا Force it to be focused on one task. That's the first thing. وَيَسْتَعِدُّ لِذَلَكَ قَبْلَ الدُّخُولِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ And a person should start preparing for salah before entering salah. What does this mean? You jama'a, sometimes, you know, why did the Prophet ﷺ say that you should not run to the salah? Even if you're late to it, you should come calmly. وَعَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةَ وَالْوَقَارِ He said, you have to be tranquil and you have to be peaceful when coming to salah. You know why? Why? Because khushu' does not begin in salah. Khushu' begins when you're walking. Subhanallah. Sakina and waqar, this is, this is part of khushu'. 
So khushu' does not begin when you say Allahu Akbar. No, that's not what khushu'. Khushu' begins when you're coming from your house. You hop in your car and you're telling yourself, I'm going to meet Allah. And when you pull up and you see the masjid, this is the house of Allah, Allahu Akbar. This is where the light of Allah is sought. This is where I can find Allah's light. And you're coming in with this intention. And you're walking peacefully. And you're walking tranquilly. And you're walking in the state of khushur. Reflecting on every footstep that you're taking. Knowing that it will intercede for you. That this step, the more sincere it is, the farther you will attain in, in levels in Jannah. As you're walking. Subhanallah. And you're reflecting. A person comes in, they do what? Before salah, you pray two rak'ahs. You pray two rak'ahs of sunnah, tahiyyatul masjid. And then you sit down. The adhan was called. There's five minutes until the kama. The best time, one of the best times to make dua is between adhan and iqama. As a matter of fact, it's when dua is accepted. Imagine a person, because you know the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, he said, said the brain of ibadah, of worship, is, is what? Dua. Dua. So we start with the, with the dua. Said, Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb. You know, guys, subhanAllah, some of us, we like complaining to everyone else. Right? When it comes to other people, Ya Allah, you know my back. I'm just not the same way again. I can't play this sport anymore. Ah, oh, wallah, the finances aren't too much. Ah, yeah, I need color. Kind of, you know, it doesn't taste the same. It doesn't look the same. Oh, my beard is coming. I got some more. Oh, subhanAllah, I used to lift this much, but I can't. You know, things are changing. We complain to everyone. We complain to our friends. We complain to our wife. We complain to our kids. We complain to our, our co-workers. We complain to our classmates. He kept, ah. But when it comes to Allah, Ya Rabb, give me. <laughs> straight up with Allah. Ya jama'a, be the opposite. With others, if you need them, tell them, hey, you know, I need this. Don't complain. When you want to complain and break yourself and humble yourself, who do you do it to? Only Allah. When we do this, we taste ibadah. We taste it. You come, you lift your hands, and you know that whoever lifts their hands for Allah, Allah is shy to reject their dua. You know, there's a dua, there's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah hayyun, kareemun. Allah is shy and generous. He's too shy and too generous. SubhanAllah, Allah is saying this about Himself. Inna Allah hayyun, kareemun. Yastahi an yarfa'a abdahu yadahu fayaruddahuma sifran khaibatan. Allah is shy to see His servant lift his hands up and asking him something. And Allah does not accept this dua. Allah is too shy and generous to do it. So, I mean, my abd came and he waited for me. For the time I told him it's, it's dua is accepted. I waited. SubhanAllah. Imagine Allah saying this. He waited until between Adhan and Iqama. He came a little early. He was thinking of me on the way. And he gathered all his humum. He didn't complain to anyone. But now he comes to me. And he's saying, he lifts his hands, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb Allah, so many stresses in the dunya, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, everything's on top of me. My health isn't the same. Zay Zakariya alayhi salam, Rabbi inni wa hana What did, what did Zakariya say? He said, oh my Lord, my bones are shriveled. Washta'ala al-ra'su shayba, and my hair is full of white hairs. Walam akum bi du'aika Rabbi shaqiyya, my du'a, Ya Rabb, I never... Hesitate, I never did my dua wrong. All I made dua to was you, Ya Allah. SubhanAllah. And then, after being an old man without children, what did he say? You know, he asked for a son. Right? SubhanAllah. He said, after all this, he's like, Ya Rabbi, you know, I never, I never stopped making dua for you. Did Zakaria complain to anyone else? Not a single, no. Why would he complain? He has a lot of complaints. You jama'a these complaints. You know when you vent to people? Some people, especially like the sisters, they feel like, oh, we need to like go and vent. I need to talk to someone. Jama'a, talk to Allah. 
Talk to Allah. Cry to Allah. Weep to Allah. Break yourself. Humiliate. Speak to Him. You don't have to memorize dua. Astaghfirullah wa atubu. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Rabbi ni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira wa illam taghfir li wa tarhamni la akunanna min al-khasirin. We memorize the dua. These are the greatest duas. But sometimes we just say it without hudur al-qalb. You know the way to make this dua is not to just say them like we memorize them. Right? All the du'as in the Quran. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi taqabbal du'a, Rabbi ghfir li wa li walidayya wa li al-mu'minina, yawma yakumu al-hisab, Rabbi havli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyib. All these du'as in the Quran, right? We could just make them. If we don't establish the inkisar, the brokenness in front of Allah, if the tear doesn't come down, then we're, we're, not, we're not there yet. So we have to complain and complain and then feel like no one can help us. Wallahi, Ya Rabb, we're helpless. Ya Rabb, without you, where are we? Ya Rabb, I'm lost. Ya Rabb, my children, if you don't raise them for me, I don't know how to raise them, Ya Allah. I never tried this. I don't have experience in this. This is the first time I have a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old in my life. I didn't have a, a, a practice test run, Ya Rabb al Without you, I'm nothing. Ya Rabb, give them tarbiyah for me because I can't do it. I'm trying. But without you, I, I can't do anything. And cry. This is how the dua is answered. And if a person enters salah in the state of khushu' after making dua this way, Ya Allah, your salah will be unlike any salah you can imagine. Wallah, you'll st- you will start to love this standing in front of Rabbil Alameen. You know what the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say? Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us Allah mention us in the ala. We want this, right? We want Allah to remember us. When, when he was stressed, they would tell him, Ya Rasulullah, you know, these armies are surrounding us from here. Ya Rasulullah, this person, these munafiqeen are, are calling your wife X, Y, and Z. Ya Rasulullah, this person had this problem. Ya Rasulullah, this person died. Ya Rasulullah, this person left. Ya Rasulullah, this person came and went and... And he was, you know what he would say? Ya Bilal, arihna biha. Say, go, Bilal, give us comfort, come here. What did he give him comfort with? He would call iqamah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's it. The moment the Prophet Wasallam said, Allahu Akbar, this is raha. He went into his zone. He forgot every stress. He was relieved from every pain. He forgot everything that was on his mind before Salah. So many things to think about, but the moment you throw it behind you, and you're in front of Allah, Ya Jama'ah, what's the stress? Tell me, what, what is the stress? The only time, if we died in Salah, is there a problem? Wallahi, it's the best death. Wallahi, there's nothing better, no other place better to die than in sujood, in your Salah. But what are we stressed about? It's good. Salah is our safe haven. It's safe haven. Right? We know this. And that's why he said, Tayyib. But he said sometimes it's very difficult to establish khushu'a. And he said, إِنَّ الْعِلَّةَ مَتَى تَمَكَّنَتْ لَا يَنْفَعُهَا إِلَّا الدَّوَاءُ الْقَوِيِّ he said, but the disease, if the disease is so strong in the heart, only a strong medicine can benefit it. Sometimes the disease is so much in the heart, we cannot establish this khushu'ah. Our salah is weak. Our khushu'ah, our, our focus in salah is weak. We cannot connect to Allah. We cannot think of Allah. We cannot ask Allah. We're just praying. We're mumbling words that we learned since we were children. That never changed. The dua is the same dua. The surahs we recite are the same surahs. There are five surahs. We don't do any other ones. It's over and over and over. Why? Because if we recite other surahs, we're going to have to think and we don't want to think. We want to get it done and over with. Ya Allah. Da'at. Subhanallah. Da'at. The salah gets lost this way. He said sometimes the disease is so hard it takes over the heart. And then he says... 
And the example of that is the example of a tree. A tree that is planted, that has branches all over. And a person is trying to rest in peace under it, but he can't because this tree attracts so many birds. And every time he, he shakes the tree or sticks a branch inside of it, the birds fly away. And the moment that he tries to rest again, as soon as he falls into rest, what happens? The birds come back and they start... Can't think any. He can't rest. He said this tree is the example of the dunya that is planted in the heart of us. If the dunya is planted inside of us, if the dunya has big branches that are connected to everything in our life, every aspect of our life, how are we going to prevent the, the birds from coming to us while we're trying to establish khushua? He said, some hearts, the disease is like a tree, it's planted. And the birds are flocking to it. The moment you shake it off, you say, A'udhu Billahi Mishtar Rajeem. You spit to your left. You start focusing again, guess what happens? The birds come back. And you spit again, and they come back until a person has this waswas, right? Can't, can't focus. So he said this person needs a spiritual surgery. They need iqtila' al-shajara. He said, فَإِنْ أَرَدْتَ الْخَلَاصِ فَاقْطَعَ الشَّجَرَةِ If you really want to get rid of these whispers, these distractions, then you have to pull out the tree. He said, فَكَذَلِكَ شَجَرَةُ الشَّهْوَ إِذَا عَلَّتْ وَتَفَرَّقَتْ أَغْصَانُهَا إِنْ جَذَبَتْ إِلَيْهَا الْأَفْكَارُ كَنْ جِذَابِ الْعَصَافِيرِ إِلَى الْأَشْجَارِ وَالذُّبَابِ إِلَى الْأَقْذَارِ Subhanallah. He said, the same way the birds come to the trees or even the flies come to the garbage. أَعَزَّكُمُ الله. He said, that's how these thoughts come and distract. فَذَهَبَ الْعُمْرُ النَّفِيسِ فِي دَفْعِ مَا لَا يَنْدَفِعَ Ya Allah, man. Allah مَلْطُفْ لَنَا Wallahi, this is so, so deep. He said, فَذَهَبَ الْعُمْرُ He said, life was gone trying to shoo away what cannot be shown away. Salah, our salahs are gone. Just trying to get rid of things that we can't get rid of because of the disease that is grounded, that is rooted inside the heart, subhanAllah. He said, وَسَبَبُ هَذِهِ الشَّهْوَ الَّتِي تُوجِبُ هَذِهِ الْأَفْكَارِ He said, and the reason for this shahwa, these desires that bring these thoughts is one thing. He said, حُبُّ dunya, The love of dunya. That's it. We love it. We want more of it. This dunya, it's everything. I want to go home, I want the best car. I want the best ride. I want the best house. I want everybody to say, Fulan is successful. If I say the word successful, if I say the word successful, every single one of us, because of where we live and how we live, we think of what? Successful in their career. Successful financially. Successful, successful educationally. Successful socially. The whole Qur'an, you can't find the word success connected with anything but Jannah. If we do not redefine these terms, then how are we ever going to succeed? We can't. Hubb dunya is the way, is, is the tree that attracts all of these thoughts. But how do we uproot it? How do we uproot it? We need to get rid of it. So now he's, he's talking about some, I don't know what adhan that is, right? Your brother, mashallah. It's another, it's a sixth salah. You know? He said, is that actually, was it off? 
He said, قيل لعامر ابن عبد ابن عبد قيس رحمه الله هل تحدثك نفسك بشيء من أمور الدنيا في الصلاة? He said, does your nafs talk to you about anything in salah? He said, لأن تختلف الأسنة في أحب إلى أحب إلي من أجد هذا. He said, والله first he said, do you find thoughts these thoughts coming to your mind in salah? They asked him. Because they saw him so khashi'. He's so focused in his salah. Nothing can move. He said, do, they, do you get these thoughts? And how do you show them? He's like, Wallahi, these thoughts don't come. And it's more beloved to me to be stabbed with swords than to feel one of these thoughts in my salah. Can't, I can't live, a, I can't pray a salah like that. That's not a salah. A salah where I have to keep shooing away. I want our life to be gone with these thoughts, ya jama'ah. He said, المعنى الثالث You know, he said, والمعنى الثالث التعظيم لله والهيبة He said, another, the third meaning is to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His greatness. And it comes from two things. And it's, it's born from two things. معرفة جلال الله تعالى Knowing the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His greatness. And knowing how low this nafs is and how it is a servant of Allah. Ya yeah, nafs, you're starting to think. You, you think you're something? La wallah, you're a servant of Allah. And I'm going to make you a servant. You put your nafs down. Guys, you know this nafs? I read this book for one of my shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Aziz Tarifi. And this is a sheikh I really benefited from. He wrote this book. He said, uh, its title was Al-Faslu Bayn Al-Aqli Wal Nafs. Right? He said, Al-Fasl Bayn Al-Aqli Wal Nafs. He said, the, 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 the difference between, or the separation between the mind and the, the nafs, the self, the ego. So, you know how we all think that the nafus, Allah put this nusu, nafus, these souls into us. They're all the same, but the uqul tatafawat. You know, we think the intellects, the minds, some people are smarter than others by nature. The sheikh made an assessment in the introduction of the book. You know what he said? He said, La. He said, I say that Allah equally gave everyone the same intellectual capacity. But what's different is the nafs. That's. <laughs> And he wrote the whole book to prove this point, and it's, an, it's a phenomenal book. It's called Al Fasl Bain Al Aqli Wal Nafs. If anyone can read it, I don't know if it's translated. If I know they, if, if they can translate it, Aslan, because it's, it's a deep book. But what he's saying is this nafs, some of, it, some of these nafus are lazy, some of these nafus are motivated, some of these nafus are, are, are just, you know strive for good, some of them strive for bad, some of them need more purification and cleansing than others, right? So, but each nafs uses its mind to fulfill something. Like, somebody uses this mind to make money, the other person uses that same capacity to fulfill their desire. Another person find, uses the same amount of mind trying to find a way out of every problem that they get into, right? Some people use the same mind to go and do haram. But it's the same, it's the same mind capacity, but different nafus. That's what he was saying. Hence why we need to do tathir lil nafus. Now look at this, and I'll end with this. He said, وَإِذَا اسْتَقْبَلَ الْقِبْلَةِ فَقَدْ صَرَفَ وَجْهَهُ عَنِ الْجِهَاتِ إِلَى جِهَةِ بَيْتِ اللَّهِ فصرف قلبه إلى الله تعالى فصرف القلب أو فصرف قلبه إلى الله تعالى أولى من ذلك. He said when you stand and face the qibla, what do we face when we face the qibla? What do we face? The Kaaba. The Kaaba is what the first house for Allah to be worshipped in this world, right? He's saying, Tab, if you are turning your body from every other direction, you're facing who? Allah. Allah's house. He said, then it is more deserving for your heart to be facing Allah. 
than to be connected and facing other things in life. Do you agree? He said, if you turned your body from everything to face the Kaaba, then your heart needs to turn, and it's more deservant of turning towards Allah. He said, وَإِذَا كَبَّرْتَ أَيُّهَا الْمُصَلِّ فَلَا يُكَذِّبَنَّ قَلْبَكَ لِسَانَكَ لأنه إذا كان في قلبك شيء أكبر من الله تعالى فقد كذبت. He said, and when you say Allah Akbar, you're saying God is the greatest. And if your heart did not truly make Allah greater than every problem, every stress, every desire, everything that's inside of it, then what your tongue said is lying. And you began your salah with a lie from the beginning. Ya Allah. Na'udhu billah min al-kabh. SubhanAllah, one of the most recurring ayat in the Qur'an is what? Two ayat. The most repeated ayat in the Qur'an. What's the first one? Come on, guys. No, the most repeated ayat. There's a particular verse that was repeated the most. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ It speaks about lying or belying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the second most repeated verse in the Qur'an? Come on guys. Surah Al-Mursalat. وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ And woe to those who, are, who lie. Ya Allah, about the lie. So he's saying right now, when you say Allahu Akbar, because like, Allahu Akbar is, is, a, is it's kind of like a, it's an incomplete sentence almost. Allahu Akbar is an open-ended phrase. It's not just intended like Allahu Akbar. You have to say, when, you know Akbar in English, so I could translate, is a comparative word. You know what comparatives are? If I say Allah is greater, right? What's the continuation? Greater than what? Biggest. Great. No, it's not Allahu Al-Akbar. It's Allahu Akbar. Because Allah wants you to fill in the blank. You're th- stressing something. You're thinking of something. You're concerned about something. There's something distracting you, pulling you away from Allah. Then guess what? You start your salah. You're thinking of all of this. You want to throw it behind your back, right? Allahu Akbar. Ya, ya, ya Rabb, look. I threw it all behind me. You're greater than all of that. That's what it means. So he's saying, if the heart did not throw everything behind it and focus on Allah when it said Allahu Akbar, then the first statement of entering salah is a lie. And if something begins with a lie, then what is it? Is it really going to help us? I don't think it's going to help us. So let's correct it. So let's not begin our salah with a lie. The next thing he said, فَإِذَا اسْتَعَذْتَ He said, when you do, uh, of course... He went into, oh, he said, فَإِذَا اسْتَعَذْتَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْإِسْتِعَاذَةَ هِيَ لَجْءٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ فَإِذَا لَمْ تَلْجَأْ بِقَلْبِكَ كَانَ كَلَامُكَ لَغْوًا He said, and no, when you say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ It means what? I seek refuge in Allah. He said, and if your heart did not seek refuge when your tongue sought refuge, then you're not truly seeking refuge. And what is making you enter into salah by saying, A'udhu Billahi Ash-Tajr, is also a lie. There's no refuge. What are you seeking refuge? If the refuge is for the heart, right? But if our heart is not truly seeking refuge and help, then where is it? It's a problem. Right? Subhanallah. So we need to, ya jama'ah, we need to, we need to start fixing, fixing our salahs up. Wallahi, there's nothing more, there's no action more beloved to Allah than salah. There's nothing more beloved to Allah than the fard salah. There's nothing that brings Allah's love to us more than our fard salah. You know, sometimes we think of sunnahs and stuff like that. Like, oh, okay, I'm giving da'wah. What about your salah? What about your fajr? Are you praying on time? You waking up for fajr? Are you lowering your gaze when you're giving da'wah? See, that's fard. Da'wah is a sunnah. 
See why? Some people, everybody wants to be the da'wah guy. Right? Leave the da'wah aside. Are you lowering your gaze? That's fard. Are you avoiding haram? That's fard. Are you not delaying your salah? That's fard. Are you establishing, the, are you trying to perfect your furud? That's, that's fard min bab awla. Why are we worrying about sunnahs when the fard is imperfect? Let's perfect the fard before we move on, okay? So our project, inshallah, from now, this week till next week, is to master our salah. Is to master it. We begin our khushu'ah from when we get, leave our houses, we get here early, we make our dua, we break ourselves and make our complaints to Allah. When we stand, all of these complaints we're complaining about, throw them behind you. When you say, Allahu Akbar, because Allah is greater than all of them. And then let your heart seek Allah's help. And remember that the base of salah is humility. So let us put ourselves down for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us khushua. May Allah grant us khushua. May Allah accept our salahs. May Allah allow us to perfect our salahs. Ya Rabbi, don't let us pray another salah in our life except that it's rectified and perfected, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and that we perform it in the best fashions and ways possible, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, accept our du'as. Ya Allah, don't allow us to break ourselves except to you. Ya Allah, don't allow us to humble ourselves except to you. Ya Allah, don't allow us to humiliate ourselves except to you. Ya Allah, do not allow us to seek refuge in anyone but you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, allow us to connect to you. Grant us a connection, grant us guidance, guide our families, guide our spouses, guide our children. Make them steadfast upon the faith, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Do not lose them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow our children to understand the depth of Salah. Ya Allah, allow our children and our progeny to taste the sweetness of Salah. Ya Allah, make them from those who love Salah and make them from those who die upon Salah. And make our last words in this dunya La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa asru da'wana Alhamdulillahi Rabbil alameen